I would have preferred states' rights. I think it would have been better if it were up to the states. Joining me now, Ben Carson. He's the former Housing and Urban Development Secretary under Donald Trump. He's also endorsed Trump again in the 2024 Republican nominating contest. Dr. Carson, thank you very much for staying up late for us tonight. Donald Trump says that he is open to a 15-week national abortion ban. He said that just this week. Would you support that? Well, uh, thanks for having me, Abby. Uh, you know, I support anything that's going to save lives. And I think the people who are at different places in terms of timing are still under the same umbrella, marching toward a time when we have respect for life. Don't you think it's important also, just from the perspective of voters, to know where their elected leaders stand on such an important issue to so many Americans? It's, it's not a question within the Republican Party just of whether they're on some continuum. Voters, especially women, want to know, at what point would you pass a ban? Would it become criminalized to have an abortion? Well, recognize that uh, with the reversal of uh, Roe v. Wade, that has been placed in the hands of the people and the state. And that's exactly where it should be. So does that so mean that that's, that's a important. no to what a national the ban then? Does that mean that it, a national ban should be off the table if it's something that should be handled at the state level? I think uh, handling it at the state level is the appropriate place to do it, absolutely. In the past, back in 2015, you likened women who have an abortion to slave owners. That's clearly based on the polling, not where most of the country is. Is this an issue that might be a blind spot for you in where the American people are today in 2024? Well, what I actually said is that the issue of slavery made me begin thinking differently about abortion because slave owners believed that they could do anything they wanted to the slaves, beat them, rape them, kill them, it didn't matter. It was theirs and they could do it. And uh, then I started thinking, what if the abolitionists had said, well, I'll tell you what, I don't believe in slavery, but you know, you do what you want to do. Where would we be today? Maybe there is something that is right. Maybe there is something that's wrong. Maybe we should stand up for the right. I guess one would argue that the issue here is that women are the ones who are deciding what to do in the case of abortion, whereas slave owners were making choices about other human beings, and that's a completely different thing. I think what we need to do is make sure that women have appropriate choices. It's extremely difficult to adopt an American baby. It's extremely expensive. We need to make that into something that's very easy. There are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of families who are just dying to have a baby and would love to adopt and give that baby a very, very good home. We need to work on issues like that. In that same vein, um, Alabama, as I'm sure you saw this week, their legislature did decide to protect IVF, in vitro fertilization, and those procedures that families use to start families to have babies. Do you believe that IVF should be legal? I think it's a, a very uh, good scientific advancement, making it possible for people to have babies who previously could not have them. And, uh, you know, we need to be very careful when we do blanket things like saying all of it is going to be uh, curtailed. The liability issue, I think, I mean, obviously the legislature, if they thought that uh, this judge's ruling would have allowed IVF to continue unfettered, the judge ruled that embryos are people, um, children. If they thought that that wouldn't affect IVF, they wouldn't have moved to protect it. So did they make the right decision to protect the procedure in Alabama? No, I don't think it was it's the right decision because, again, we're talking all and blanket decisions. Yeah. This is not a situation where we should be doing blanket incision, decisions. We need to be parsing out what is appropriate 
in certain cases. We had to look at the reason for the law and, uh, you know, not just say this is the blanket statement and this is what you're going to have to abide by. It's, it's not appropriate in this situation. I want to move on to something else. Last week, you were honored at an event for black conservatives. And at that event, I want to play what Donald Trump said about black voters in this country. Listen. And a lot of people said that that's why the black people like me, because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. And they actually viewed me as I'm being discriminated against. My, the mugshot, we've all seen the mugshot. And... You know who embraced it more than anybody else? The black population. Do you agree with him that black people related to him better because of a mugshot? Well, you have to understand what he was saying. What he was saying is that there's been a history of black people sometimes being prosecuted because of who they are rather than because of what they did. And therefore, since that seems to be the case with him as well, they could identify with that. I don't think it has anything to do with racism. I didn't say anything about racism. I mean, he said black people related to him because of his mugshot. It, the implication there is that there's some kind of, uh, you know, attraction to Trump because he was briefly uh, booked in a jail and taken his picture of at... Uh, you know, in a county jail. I mean, why would he make that broad statement about black people in this country who, frankly, I'm sure you know, are fighting to keep their family members and their friends and their relatives out of jail? Well, remember, uh, it wasn't Clinton, it wasn't Bush, it wasn't Obama, it wasn't uh, Biden who instituted situations where we had criminal justice reform, it was Trump. And I think people remember that. Are you confident that Trump will stand by the criminal justice reform, the First Step Act that he passed as president? Will he stand by that if he's reelected? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Uh, I remember the discussions around that, and uh, it was very heartfelt. All right, Dr. Ben Carson, thank you very much for joining us. Next, President Biden's sharp words for...